Hello there, and welcome to the Holocron Cast, a Star Wars podcast. Episode 1. We are the Powerful Thigh Guys. I'm Tyler. And I'm Dan, the Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace? That's what you are? Because it's episode 1. Yeah, it is episode 1. This is the Phantom Menace of our podcast. It m- have some good moments, but it probably won't be the best. But, but that can describe but, my life. But it'll be good enough to keep you coming back for more, you know? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, first episode is always a train wreck. Not necessarily. Have you seen episode one of the Rugrats? Perfection. That's true. The final generation. Have you seen episode one of... I got nothing. Yeah, nothing. Okay. We're here to talk about Star Wars. Plenty of things about Star Wars to discuss. <laughs> yes. New got, stuff. Got a lot of new stuff coming in the future. Old stuff. Old stuff. Even a bear, in the words of one Cleveland Brown. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah, so, this is our first episode. Hopefully, we'll have a lot more for you. So, first episode, we're going to talk about what we like about Star Wars, why we love it, what our favorites are, and just talk about some stuff we love about it. So, kind of got to got to make sure, you know, if you keep coming back, you know who we are, so mm-hmm. we're not just two random Joe Schmoes just giving you the news. Yeah. So I'll start, I guess. Yeah. Star Wars. I have a weird history with Star Wars. <laughs> As a kid, I grew up with the prequels. I had never seen the original trilogy until shortly before The Force Awakens came out. I had seen the original trilogy in bits and pieces... But I grew up with prequel the prequels. I remember seeing episode two in theaters, episode three in theaters, having the DVDs, having the big Obi Wan and Anakin action figures. You know, I can almost hear the comments booing. But then, when episode seven was coming out, the hype was there, and the, my, the podcast I listened to would talk about it, and you would talk about it when we were starting to hang out more, and then I just fell back into it. Episode 7, Episode 8, Rogue One, Solo. Loved them all. No. Fell right down the fell, hole. Fell right back in the hole. Because I loved it as a kid, but when, growing up, you know, it just was a thing I watched as a kid. And then I just... Grew just, out of it. I want to say I grew out of it, but I just... Something, it just... There, it wasn't around. It wasn't in the... You just kind of drifted away. And plus, as a kid, you really don't have much control over what you consume. Yeah. And then now we're here, more excited than ever for everything that's coming. Episode 9, The Mando. Went to Star Wars Celebration last year. Yes. Going next year. Exciting stuff. Exciting times. Anything else you'd like to add to your history with the franchise, (laughs) sir? (laughs) That's about it. I have a problem with talking over people, so if there's any dead silences, it's because I'm worried about talking over you. Nah, it's okay. Talk over (laughs) me. It's better than dead silence. That's true. Yeah. So my history with the franchise, I have a very, uh, I would describe it as a very average history with the franchise. My dad was a hard, was a pretty hardcore fan back when it first came out. In the he, 70, 77? Yeah, he saw episodes 4, 5, and 6 all in theaters, day like pretty much day one. That's awesome. And so when I was growing up, the one thing me and my father would always bond over was Star Wars. And food. And food. We are both <laughs> men of heavy weight. <laughs> but, you know, my sister would have her friends come over. I didn't have any friends. So me and my dad would just go and put in an old VHS of Empire Strikes Back. Watch that, and it was great. We'd get some MacDagnals. <laughs> MacDagnals. MacDagnals. It was great. So I grew up watching those. I'm pretty sure I saw episode two in theaters, but I was like five so I don't really remember it. But I do remember we saw episode three in theaters twice because you got a special poster that we forgot to pick up the first time. <laughs> and it was great. You saw the poster? Yeah, it's still um, it's in my garage. Okay. It's a, it's a poster of Vader holding his hand out, and it just says, Who's your daddy? <laughs> the theater gave that away? The theater gave it. <laughs> That's funny. It was beautiful. Ooh. And then, you know, me and my dad still watch Star Wars a lot. Uh... I went and saw, me and him went and saw episode 7 together after I had seen it with everyone else. We went and saw episode 8 together. Uh, the only one we didn't go and see together was Solo. 
you gotta see that one solo, you know, by yeah, yourself. That's true. That's that's the whole point. So I've been I've been hardcore into it pretty much for my whole life. I never got too involved in legends though. I was always more Yeah. We're not legends people. We're gonna put that out there now. I open we know nothing about legends <laughs> except Le Ook and all that dumb stuff, so I know I know a little bit about legends, but not a lot. I've never been a fan of it personally. So yeah. but I was always just more of I loved the movies growing up and now I'm more into just everything that's canon. Mm-hmm. Clone Wars, TV Rebels. shows. Re- Rebels. <laughs> 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 I can't believe that actually happened during recording. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll look the video games, too. Oh, yeah. Fallen Order looks good. Fallen Order does look good. I'm a big proprietor of EA Battlefront, too. Oh, no. It, it, but it's <laughs> coming around. Yeah, it's not bad. It just needs more stuff to do. People talk about it more now, though. Like it is not a, it's not a, a sin to be an apologist anymore. Oh, yeah. Like it used to be. I was there. We both there were there. Midnight release. Yeah. Everyone trying to get the refunds the next day. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I still play every now and then. It's all right. It's fun. It's a good game. It's just, I wish the leveling system there's more to it. You know. Like, more I, reasons to come back and play more than just to have fun, you know? I want more guns. I'm sorry, more blasters. Blasters. Get it right, man. I'm sorry. I say that, you know, oh, I'm such a guru of Star Wars. This is just the holocron them. cast. We need to be the holocrons of Star Wars. Just kidding. We need to have knowledge. We need to be... Correct knowledge. Knowledgeable. So, yeah. Yeah. So, that's just where, you know, how we got... How we got our starts in the franchise. Mm, yeah. And we've been going strong ever since. Pretty much. I, I would define us as hardcore since 7. Yes. I've... Y- yes. Hardcore since 7. Easily. And, of course, really into it as kids, as most kids yeah. should be. As all all kids should be. Yeah. I gotta get to my nieces soon. Yeah, you gotta show them that. How old are they? Uh, almost five. They're not really big Star Wars kids, though. Paw Patrol kids? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yes. Yeah, you probably want to probably give them another year or so, then show them episode four. Episode three. Like, I start with episode three, baby. No, that doesn't, no you can't start with episode three. <laughs> that doesn't make no sense. They gotta start with episode eight. But then they'll be so confused, be like, well, <laughs> why don't we go to Canto Bite more? Where's Rose? Like, where's the Canto important Bite? questions. Remember Canto Bite? Yeah, I do. We can't, we can't have an episode, we can't have the, we gotta get off the, the Last Jedi train because we can't have that debate in episode one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't dare want to see what the comments will look like when we get to that episode. <laughs> yeah, so, so, there's a lot of Star Wars coming up, Dan. We're getting close to a lot of things. We we were through a drought. It's been a it's been a while since Solo. Not a lot of there's been books and comics which have been good, but um, no like visual. What's the word? Not visual. Visual aids. Like well, no, like <laughs> like television esque media. Well, there's been Resistance, but we haven't watched that yet. We haven't. We're gonna catch up soon once Disney Plus comes out, because they don't have it on Blu-ray. I'm not buying a DVD. So, you know, priorities, standards. And, you know, also uh, when we just didn't watch it initially. Yeah, we fell behind, forgot to record them. And, you know, life happens. But we have a lot of exciting stuff coming. We got, just this year we have episode 9, of course, Rise of Skywalker. Super Obviously. excited for. We got The Mandalorian, November 12th. And then we got... Jedi Fallen Order, November 15th. Oh, those are right back to back. Yeah. That's exciting. Three days after. That's exciting. Oh. I was about to say something, but I don't know what it was about to be. Yeah, you know, it's, uh... That's, I'm, I'm really hyped for Mandalorian. Yeah, it looks so good. The bit, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a big... Defender, as you know, of Disney Star Wars. <laughs> I can almost feel Reddit behind me 
when I say that. At all times. At all times. Whenever I defend Disney Star Wars, I can feel Reddit breathing down my neck. <laughs> but the one thing I will agree on is that they haven't placated all the audiences. We need a mature something for Star Wars. And Mandalorian is looking like it's going to be the mature, dark, you know, adult storyline. You're telling me Resistance isn't for everybody? You know, <laughs> Resistance is probably for exactly two groups of people. Children. And Star Wars and, fans. And big, fat, sweaty guys like us who just have to watch everything about the franchise. Yeah. I've heard it gets better as it goes along, though. Yeah. I know it's... See, the, the Season 2 trailer looked good. Yeah. I know, Kylo's in it. That's gonna be fun. I know I've heard, I've heard it, you know... It's a weird theme with Star Wars cartoons where they start off kind of bad. Yeah. It's weird that there's only going to be two seasons of it. Yeah. Well, there's... Th I think it's because of the time frame they set up. Yeah. Because it's already in, uh, like, episode eight, I think, by the end of it. Well, then, actually, that wouldn't be too bad, because then you think they would have a, a, a whole year between eight and nine. Yeah. I have no clue what's going on with it, honestly. Yeah, that we probably shouldn't uh, talk too much about too much about resistance when we haven't seen us. We've seen one episode. We seen like two. Did we see two? I don't remember. Oh no, that's also why we stopped watching it because the the um, recordings were all uh, glitched out. Yeah. I forgot the word. Yeah, they were fucked up because it was raining or something. It was yeah, it was a thunderstorm. Not, yeah. But, um, yeah, The Mandalorian, super exciting. John Favreau, Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni is a god. He's a fucking god. I love that man. I will watch anything he does. Like, season one of Avatar, best season of Avatar. He was part that, of it. He directed, like, four episodes. It never peaked since he directed it, you know? He is the pinnacle of storytelling in the animated medium. And now he's going to bring that to live action. That's exciting. It really makes me hurt inside when you said season one of Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Dave Floney brings it over the top. All the other seasons are better quality, but Dave Floney's name on the first season just makes it the best, you know? That's fair. I can accept that. He's also the voice of Chopper. Yes. Yeah, Mandalorian, you know, got a lot of... I like uh, Prince Oberyn being the Mandalorian. Pedro Pascal, yeah. I don't know actor names. This is something the viewers will know as time goes on. <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah. not know. I, I only know actor names if they've already been in Star Wars. So I'll probably remember his name after I see Mandalorian. Carl Weathers is in it. He plays, he's Apollo, not Apollo. Yeah, he's Apollo Creed and Rocky. I, yeah, you have no clue. You have no clue. I'm not a very knowledgeable person about actors in movies. Taika Waititi's going to be playing the Jordan. That's exciting. He He's Korg and... He's Korg and Ragnarok? Yeah. And okay. Marvel. He, his voice acting is really good. He's just a talented man. And anything he's in, he's directing... A lot of interesting directors on the show. Bryce Dallas Howard, him, Filoni. Who else? There's just a lot of good people. You know what? Speaking about talented men, another thing coming up, uh, not anytime soon, but has been announced as the Obi-Wan show. Yes. Obi -Wan I just wanted show. to get... I, 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 heard, I heard you say talented men, and I just needed to fulfill that segue. I'm sorry. Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor is a very beautiful man. He is. I love him so much. He's... That show... Hopefully, we'll probably we're not get a lot more news on that till a while. Star Wars Celebration, probably August. It probably won't come out until 2021. Yeah. And then they just recently announced the director, though, of the show. Her name's like Deborah Chow. I don't know who that is. I'm not super familiar with her either. She, I think she's directing that one of the episodes of The Mandalorian as well. Mm. So. so we'll have to study every frame of that episode and see <laughs> the caliber. The caliber. I'm sure she's fine. I, I trust them hiring people. I mean, at least they got Ewan. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be... I, I, I don't think anyone would care if it wasn't Ewan. No one would really want to watch it yeah. if it wasn't. I would... Obi-Wan's my favorite character in Star Wars. One of my favorite. Top three. And I would not watch it if it wasn't him. Yeah, that's fair. I pro oh, actually, I probably would watch it, but I'd just be mad the whole time. You'd just be so fucking pissed. Yeah. But like, who else would play him? No one. Like, I could play him, but... Especially because he's in the right age. Yeah, he's probably actually probably a little young, too. A little young, but they'll age him up with some makeup. Yeah. They'll give him a little bit of gray. A little bit more gray, I mean. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's easier to age someone up than age someone down. So. 
Yeah, for, <laughs> that, yeah, that works a bit. That better. works a lot easier, especially with the technology they have today. We also got Cassian coming soon, which is exciting. Not much news on that. We show, really know pretty much nothing other than this Cassian and K two. But that's exciting. That's all we need. More K two. More Cassian. Yeah, more K two. K two is the best droid. Easily best droid, and Cassian is a uh, one of the more interesting characters from Rogue One. He's there's a lot more to explore with him, I believe. Like I think he's more gray. He's like he, he literally killed a guy in the first shot of the film, like an ally. Like I think Cassian could be the 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 Cassian show could be the gateway to me actually starting to like the rebels. Because <laughs> uh, another thing about me, I'm not a big proponent of the rebellion. I'm an Empire guy personally. Yeah. I just think the rebels are very. Eh. Like, I like, you know, obviously, I love the main trio, and, you know, everybody on board the Falcon, but the actual, like, rebel rebels, I've always just been, I don't, I couldn't care less. <laughs> but the Empire, that's always been my, my side. You just love them, you love yourself some stormtroopers and some generals. I love some stormtroopers, Vader just killing them haphazardly. But how do you not like, well, they're not the rebels, but never mind. But... Rogue One was the first instance where I saw the Rebellion and was like, that's actually kind of neat. Saw Gerrera is my favorite Rebel because he's not a good guy and that's fascinating. No, he is a good guy. He's a good guy doing he, wrong he's things. He's doing it the wrong way. And yeah. that's so fascinating because that is exactly what they should have been like the whole time, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it'll be explored more in The Mandalorian too because the Rebels win the Rebellion. They take down the Death Star, get rid of the Emperor... But they're not prepared to take care of the the galaxy when they when they overthrow the government. And you know the outer I mean? rim just falls to and shit. Then, which will be explored in Rebels. I mean, not Rebels. Mandalorian. Mandalorian. <laughs> See, I'm a big fan of Rebels because Star Wars Rebels, the television program. That's true. Is one of my favorite pieces of Star Wars in general. Yeah, Re Rebels, the TV show, is very good. But also, like... They also, they don't have the same sort of angle as Rogue One, but they do kind of have a similar angle in the sense that they're very kind of passive almost, and that really annoys the, the crew of the Ghost a lot. Yeah. Because, you know, Mon Mothma, I can't stand Mon Mothma, <laughs> personally. And Rebels really portrays that well, I think, because she's very passive. I think Rogue One portrays that well, too, how she doesn't want to hurt anybody. But, it, but we're, we are forgetting the best rebel of all time. Bail Organa? Yes. The, the man who is the most underrated character in Star Wars because he is the Rebellion. It's nothing without him. He started it on that little base and crate that we see in Episode Eight with him, Mon Mothma, some other people up whose names I can't think of off the top of my head. That, that That's explored a lot in the Leia Princess of I was about to say, what, it, what, what was that explored in? The Princess... I forgot what the book is called. It's Princess Leia, Princess of Alderaan, I think. No. Probably it's Leia... Yeah, Princess of Alderaan. Because it's probably Alderaan's Leia, Solgaon. Princess of Alderaan. Yeah, it's the book by Claudia Gray. It's quite good. Makes me have more respect for Holdo. That's why I don't... A lot of people have problems with Holdo from Episode 8, but that makes me like her a lot more. Because she's in... I've heard a lot of people who read the book actually didn't like her in Last Jedi specifically because of the book. Yeah, that's a lot of people said that. She they, like, rewrote different. her. Well, yeah, but Ryan Johnson said that her being as quirky as she was in the book just didn't work in the movie. And they're like, we have... Because... I could see it kind of messing with the tension a little bit. Yeah. Because you already have one, you know... I, I don't know how quirky she is in the book. I haven't read this She's book. She's very quirky in the book. But you already she have... She literally has, like, a different hair color like almost every chapter. Because it's also like you need someone serious to counteract Poe's yeah. lackadaisical nature. Um, I think it could have worked though. Just her being all weird and like mysterious and just like not. Just her not. Her not being. Telling him what's going on because she's so quirky and just going about it in a weird way probably would have been more interesting. But I think overall for the film it probably wouldn't have worked though. Like they were talking about for the tone of the film too yeah I mean obviously there's a way to always do that sort of stuff but it's kind of tricky to get all that right yeah but also I could also see it just being more of because it's so much later she more 
Yeah, she's older. She's more mature. Grew she's out, grew of, out it. of it. But it's not as overwhelmingly... Maybe a little bit of a hint of it would have been nice, though. Yeah. I got I to gotta cough real quick. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Back to Baylor Organa. He, he's just the best, man. He doesn't get as much respect as he deserves. He took Leia, raised her. With... He didn't take Luke, though. Yeah, you can't. Like, they were like, can't keep them together. They know what was up. And Leia's better than Luke, so that's all we know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> better parents, man. You're telling me Bale and Brea? Organa? Bria? Brea? I forgot his wife. Brio? Name. Brea Organa. Brio inhalers. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I think her name's Brea. I don't remember her name. But, but it's not important. Well, it should be important. They raised Princess <laughs> Leia, made her... Yeah. Oh, you, she's a general now? General Leia Organa. She, she's, you guys should read that book if you haven't. It's, I highly recommend it. I don't read, but I'm going to start reading. <laughs> I'm very bad about that, like... What, like, I guess peripheral sort of stuff, like comics, books, the non auditory, audio-visual media sort of stuff. I've always been very bad at keeping up with those sorts of things. Yeah. But at the same time, I also wish they would connect them more. I think Solo did a good job of doing that, though. Solo did a good job like, of that. Like, figuring out Aura Singh got... Yeah, Brea Organa. I got it right. I knew it. <laughs> but, like, uh, like, I feel like a lot of stuff that happened, like, a lot of characters and a lot of stuff that happens in the books and comics and stuff isn't translated well to the other forms of media. Yeah. Like, like you don't... He- like, book-exclusive characters, you just, like, never hear about them. Yeah, they really make it into the films. Like... Like, like, even the animated show characters really don't make it into things that are, like the films. The one exception was uh, Chopper being in Rogue One and the ghost yeah. flying around. That was cool. Also, um... Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, the, you know, there, I feel like hopefully once Episode 9 comes out... Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. Episode 9. <coughs> hopefully we get, like, the um, Aiden Versio's daughter, Zay. Hopefully she's just in the background so now she doesn't have to be a big role but like yeah she, like in Battlefront 2 campaign in the DLC part at the end the extra DLC that finishes the story she goes out you're tapping a lot by the way sorry she goes out and is assigned Leia, some mission Leia assigns her a mission for the rebellion so hopefully she comes back with people or whatever for when they start to reform that. the thing I also want Shriv oh yeah Shriv's for the Battlefront the 2 campaign yeah. that'd be cool I feel Apologies like for the crinkles. I feel like after episode nine, there should be, hopefully, episode nine will be more. At least we'll get the Knights of Ren, maybe some. That's what I was gonna there. say. Um, I hope after episode nine, because they, I get they probably still want you know the main nine movies to be like anyone can just go in. They don't have to know anything outside of the previous eight movies. Mm-hmm. So it's just you know super casual and easy. But I'm hoping we start getting more and more after episode 9 that is more connecting. I think so, but they won't be as connected to the 9. They'll be connected to themselves. That's what I mean, but like more connected between each other, you know. And they can be part, like, kind of connected to 9. Yeah, but the, I think they're gonna... Yeah, they'll probably... I don't think with Disney they'll ever go away from trying to bring back characters that we know, like if they do Old Republic, which is I hope they do for the next, for the next trilogy, or not Old Republic necessarily, but... um. That time period. That era. Well, it, that's what the era is called. Yeah, the Old Republic. Oh, yeah. I mean, <coughs> Knights of the Old Republic, but I hope they do Old Republic. Like, I'm sure they'll find a way to fit Yoda in there, just because they want people to come to the theater and see it, but they don't have to, I don't think. But I'm sure they will. Well, that... Old Republic is way before Yoda's time. No, not with the new canon. It's only a thousand years in new canon. Is it only a thousand yeah. years in new canon? Yeah. Oh, that's surprising. Because I remember in old canon it was... Like 10,000. Yeah, it was like 10,000. No, it's only 1,000 now, I think. or the, Because the canon's changed it a little. Well, also, the Old Republic era, if I remember correctly, was actually a bit... Like, a long era. Yeah. So maybe the 1,000 is the end. I don't know. Like, I don't know much about it. Mm-hmm. I just know I'm not too big of a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of the... Concept. The concept of the era, but I don't think any of the stuff they've done has been particularly interesting. At least for us, personally. Yeah. You know, if you like it, that's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. If that's your favorite thing, 
That's fine. I just feel the need to address that immediately because I don't want people being like, oh, you, you hate it so much. It's just not for me. Yeah, just give me KOTOR. Give me, give me Old Republic just with no rubbing. I'm good. Yeah. Well, like, also, then you run into the problem of the people who are super hardcore into it. If you bring in these old characters and change them, then they're like, well, why, why would you change all these characters? It's just easier to get the same era. New characters. New characters. Because mm-hmm. it's... You're walking on yeah, eggshells can- trying to use all these old characters. If you portray them slightly wrong, that's the only thing people will remember. That's true. Yeah, just leave them in Legends and their universe intact. And they'll be there. They'll be like that, and then you can have canon where they have their new characters. Have their new characters in the new canon. I mean, we already know Darth Bane is canon. Yes, we don't Darth know how Bane. how much he could be involved in a Kotor. I don't. I think it'd be dumb to do it without him. Yeah, but he he's the rule too, right? He yeah, he's the rule of two. Rule of two. He introduced rule of two, and he could be the overarching villain of the three movies. He is one Part of, of the trilogy. The, it'd be cool. He is one of the more like like I say. I don't know much about legends, but whenever I see people talk about legends, one of the things a lot of people talk about is Bane. So I feel like he's a fan favorite. So that's also you know I get it. They gotta bring him in because he's the rule of two. Mm-hmm. You have to bring him in. But they have to be real careful. <laughs> yeah. Because of the slightest misstep, and they will be torn to shreds. Well, they will be no matter what, but... Yeah, it's Star Wars. Everything's torn to shreds. Do, Ever... do you know how you get Bane right, though? You cast Tom Hardy because the fire rises, brother. I was I didn't see the lights until I was already a man. Some wonder why you would shoot a man. Before throwing him out of a plane. I think I butchered that quote, but okay. No, that's right. Some wonder why you would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane. Mm. I think it'd be funny if Bane <clears throat> played Bane. If Bane played Bane? But I think he's too short, people say. He's too short to play Bane? Yeah. Like Darth Bane. To play Darth Bane? I don't yeah. know what Darth Bane looks like. Yeah. All I really know of him is what the ghost from Rebels or when he was coming out of the Clone Wars. Clone Wars. What was he coming out of? A he was in a no. He what was, was he in, in. They Yoda went to one of the ancient Sith worlds. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. And he went into an old tomb where Bane was buried, and it was like a, a dark side Force ghost was okay. what he saw. Yeah. Which are just wraiths. They're basically Bane is bound to that location, so he's not like an Obi Wan Force ghost where he can just go wherever the hell he wants. He's basically stuck there. Oh okay. Yeah. And it, it's also. If I remember correctly, it's kind of implied that it's not, like, a Bane's consciousness. I could be wrong, though. I, I read that somewhere. That might have been a Legends thing. Maybe. It's hard to keep it straight. <laughs> yeah. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of lore. It's hard to keep it all straight all the time. Also, when they, you know, I do appreciate them cherry-picking stuff from Legends and canonizing it. Yeah, they've been slowly doing that. A lot of stuff. I think more is going to happen, too, just over time. Who? More. Oh, That's going to continue to happen until oh, they, they get name. most of it in. Uh, well, probably not most of it, but they're like cherry picking like fan favorite stuff, like Thrawn. You know, get the they got the same guy who wrote the original Thrawn books. Yeah, Zon. Bring him in. You know, they got him in, had him okay everything about Thrawn and Rebels, and that's why Thrawn and Rebels is so fucking brilliant. Yeah, because they had the guy who wrote him. I think Thrawn could be better in Rebels, though. But he's also still great of what we see of him. Yeah. I think that he could have done I think more. he's underutilized more than anything. Yeah, for sure. I don't think there's anything necess- ne- necess- necess- necessarily wrong with it. No, 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 bad necessities. Once I go on my rant, I like my, I'm looking at the audio and my voice just gets progressively louder. <laughs> yeah. Our audio balance is fucked. Yeah, oh well. It's the first podcast. Hopefully yeah. it'll get better over time. Okay, so... And we jumped from point to point for a little bit. Yeah. You know, always nice to have just a little, you know, it's more natural if we just kind of let it flow and jump from point to point. Yeah. So, Dan, important Star Wars question for you. What is your favorite Tetris block? <laughs> We're starting there. Okay. Yeah. Favorite Tetris block. I Dan. like the L. Shit, that was going to be my answer, too. The I is too basic. Yeah. No, it's the I or the purple one with the, the, the purple T. The T spins, but you do them T spins in Tetris, you get a lot of points, man. I've never played Tetris. Okay, you're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about, to get to know us more about Star Wars, 
favorite. We're gonna talk about who, what our favorite movies are, our favorite character, and our favorite era. I'll start out. I say movie. We should do movie last. Yeah. Okay. Favorite era. This is gonna be controversial. Because <laughs> I know what you're about to say. I like the sequel era, the Age of Resistance. I'm a big fan of all the new movies. I Ray's one of my favorite characters. Kyle is one of my favorite characters. I just like. I just like the era. I like the people. I I I wish I wish the rebellion was a little bigger or the resistance was a little bigger, more. What's the word I'm looking for? Sizable. More sizable. So they more. They because, because I don't want it. To, I don't like this like small one, just like it was in the age of rebellion. And um, which you're, is you're you're making a lot of sounds. I'm sorry. Age of rebellion and um, yeah, it. I like that era. I like. I like the idea of what happens after the Empire Falls the most. That's why I'm excited for the Mandalorian too. That's my time. Anytime after six. Okay. See that that my thing is is like. I like I I'm a big fan of the sequels as well. However, I think the weakest part of the sequels is its era. Because it is just kind of hey here's the Empire again and hey here's the Rebellion again. I don't think First Order is like the Empire. They're they're like a mock up of the Empire. Whereas the Empire had some good and a lot of evil. The First Order is just flat evil. Mm-hmm. There's no inkling of good. There's no peace. But you know like but I mean it's more of like the two sides of the war are basically very similar. Yeah, they're similar, but. And I just would have wished, I would have been much more fascinated if it was kind of the opposite, where it's a smaller empire, and it's like the the, re, the new republic, and they're like trying to scour for the enemy, but it's like an elite version of the empire. Like, the First Order's all like, say if there was like a small task force, and they're all just super elite and powerful, and they just keep messing stuff up. So we're seeing it more of like... More of like we're watching it from the Empire's perspective, seeing yeah, like guerrilla say, attacks and I was say, the way you're saying it describes like we're watching the Empire's like the First Order's journey to try to overtake the thing. But we're seeing it from the Republic's perspective, and obviously the First Order is the villain. So it's like, how do we find them? How do we track them down? So it's more like less open war and more tracking spy sort of stuff. I think that'd be pretty interesting, but yeah. You know, we can debate about what could have been for hours. Yeah, I just—I don't know. I'm—I feel like I'm bad at explaining why I like things. What well, else? it's more of your—you're—you've always been more of a character-driven person. Yeah. So you just really like the characters, and that makes you like the era. Also, a big fan of Mas Kanata. Mas Kanata is very good. Her and Chewie have, have great, make great, great. <laughs> <laughs> I they, don't know if my hand signal was getting to you. I, I got it. They were... They're great... I don't know how to describe them. They're it. a great couple? Kind of, because they're kind of like... They, because Maz has such affection for Chewie, and I just love them <laughs> together. It's so good. But she literally says, where's my boyfriend? Yeah. Even in the Age of Resistance comic, Maz Kanaz's little thing, she's like... wants to fuck Chewie. Like, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> and that's why it's so great. It's the best. I do love that. Like, I, I can agree with you there. I do love... Almost all of the new characters introduced. All of, like, the important ones. Like, Tally Lintra. Legend, man. <laughs> important ones. Too bad she died so young. But... Paige Tico died too young. See, the question of era is a very hard one for me. Because I, I do like all of the eras a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. I but like them all too. if I had to pick one that would be my favorite, it has to go to the Clone Wars era. Yeah. Ahsoka, baby. That's that it. is the strongest conceptual era with the weakest execution in the movies. <laughs> the sequels and the prequels are opposites. Yeah. The sequels have an okay idea, but it's executed quite well. The prequels have an amazing idea, and they're executed quite poorly. Yes. Green screen, baby. Green screen all day, baby. <laughs> but um, Ooh. I just love the idea of it's because... so. When we get to the favorite character segment, this will shed more light on it. But I love the idea of just seeing one guy just controlling both sides of a war to get exactly what he wants. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a fan of dark stories where the villain wins. Because to me, it always... Why? Because it, it... Why do you want the villain to win? Well, because... 
not win the whole thing, just win that particular part of the story because it makes mm. the inevitable fall feel so much better. Yeah. You need a competent villain who can win. That's what Star Wars is good about, competent villains. <laughs> no, for real. Darth Vader's competent and Palpatine's more competent than any villain. And then Kylo Ren's kind of competent. Kylo's kind of competent. Well, I was just thinking you but, were making a joke about, like, the Imperial officers. No, but, like, the main villains are pretty good. Like, that's the thing with Star Wars. Like, their main characters, like, are good, but, like, their supporting cast, the Rebels and the Empire, and, like, there's, like, the, You're scraping the, the, a people, lot again. the people on the ground are bad. Like, they're just incompetent. Yeah. That's why the we mainly focus on the... Imperial officers are renowned for being atrocious. Yeah. But also... I'm sure Rebel officers aren't that great either. Oh, no. But I'm also like a... Except Lynch. <laughs> getting back to Clone Wars era, I also really like the idea that it's really both sides kind of suck. The Republic is in control of... it. They elected Palpatine. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're not exactly... A, they're a corrupt government. And the Separatists also aren't, you know, super great people either. I don't like the Separatists. They're just a bunch of droids. But the, I like the people behind the Separatists. Because Dunray? They're, they're the original rebels. Are they, though? Because they see the government as corrupt, and they're fighting against it to get freedom. Yeah, but they're... they're just going about it poorly and using the Trade Federation's battle droids. Like Killmonger. <laughs> oh, Good no. idea, but don't put guns in everybody's hands. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, it's like that sort of thing where both sides are kind of good and kind of bad. It's more gray-feeling... Because, you know, the Separatists just want to have their own form of government. Why do we have to drag them back kicking and screaming? But then at the same time, as far as the Republic knows, they're under the control of Darth Tyrannus. So, you know, they can't be good. Remind me of something in Star Wars. So, the Galactic Republic slash Empire controlled the whole galaxy. Why don't they have more... Why don't? Why doesn't Star Wars ever have a form of government that just lets the planets govern themselves? You keep You keep scraping. It keeps getting picked up. I don't care anymore. No, I know. I just I care. <laughs> I don't care. I I'm gonna talk how I talk. No, Get I into know, it. but it just bugs me. But um, the I the outer rim is kind of close to that. It's more of just anarchy, but it's kind of like, well, I guess it is. It, it it's mafia controlled in the outer rim. Yeah. So the Republic slash Empire does well. The Empire more than anything decided that it rules everything but they have a hard time controlling everything yeah as to why they don't just let the planets rule themselves that would be truly they want the people well they can be part of the thing but just let the, like well, well they do have their own governments on each planet but yeah. they still have to answer to the republic like Naboo has a queen she controls the day to day but Queen Amidala Queen Amidala and whatever the second one's name is. <laughs> but um, they still have to answer to the Republic. They yeah. still have to, you know, they're protected from pirates and shit by the Republic fleet, but they have to, you know, pay taxes. They're just they're just British colonies, basically. Coruscant is just Britain. <laughs> and inevitably, everyone rebels. That is true. But, you know, it's... Uh, I just like that idea, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like the original Rebellion, only they're not good... See, I have a better answer now for why I like the sequel era. Okay. The main reason I like the sequel era is I like how the protagonists of each, the good and the dark side, I love how Rey is trying so hard to be good but being pulled to the dark side, and how Kylo is trying so hard to be bad but he just keeps getting pulled to the light. I do. I think that's a way more fascinating concept than just, I'm a goody two shoe, I'm gonna be good, and I'm a bad guy, I'm gonna be bad, you know? Yeah, for sure. Kylo, I do love that idea with Kylo because that's something that in canon hasn't been explored. Someone who's trying to be bad but keeps getting pulled back to the light slowly. It's kind of revenue. <laughs> but not like as blatantly on the flip sides as much, but it's. But also, it's like a. You know, he. I lost my train of thought. Yeah, well, Kylo's sexy. That's all we know. Yeah, I got distracted by his abs. <laughs> by his pecs. He's swole as hell. He's a beautiful man. Love that man. So yeah, you know, that's our Clone Wars era, sequel era. 
I I believe firmly though the the main like the like the era of the Empire vs. Rebel. See, I like I feel like the problem with Star Wars when we talk about eras is the three the four the three movies four five and six are great movies. That struggle between the Empire and whatever is great. But I like everything that happens before that and after that. Yes. Like, the fall and the rise, that's more interesting than the actual battle itself. I, I agree. Like, not that it's a bad era. Like, they have great characters, great movies, but, like, that part is, like, the like the, like the rise to that and what happens after and the, and the fall and what happens after is more interesting than anything. I do agree. The, the sort of era that I want to see the most is before the sequels, but after six. Yeah. I want more in that 30-year period, because to that is something that I love. Like, I love the gap between three and four. Yeah, three and four, and then between six and seven. Those That's are the best. Those gaps are so fascinating, because mm -hmm. it's, well, everything's kind of fallen apart, and everything's gone to hell, basically. And that's also why I'm excited to see before episode one, like, that glad old True. Republic, and then after episode nine... Like the whatever eventually. happens, a lot, of, a lot of a lot of possibility with Star Wars. That's another reason I love it. The timeline can extend extremely far. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, well, let's talk about favorite characters. But favorite movies is going to be hard because I don't know. Favorite movies is going to be. I hard. don't know if I have a favorite movie. There's just we'll discuss it when choose. we get there. Favorite character. <laughs> I'll give you four <laughs> because it's hard to pick one. Oh, I feel you. The four are. Obi-Wan, Kenobi, Ahsoka Tano, Rey, no last name included, <laughs> Kylo Ren, slash Ben Solo. Those are my four. Give me four of yours, Dan. My top four? Yeah, just give me four of your favorite characters. I'm trying to remember what my top four were. Uh, number one, the Emperor, Sheev Palpatine. Yeah. Yeah. Two... Darth Vader, separate from Anakin, not the same person. Three. They're the same person. They are not the same person. <laughs> that is a, that'll be a whole debate episode. Yeah. Uh, three. Obi Wan Kenobi. And four. Kylo Loren. Kylo Loren. We have two saints. And obviously, our two differences. You're, you're obviously your dark side. Yeah. I'm light side. I'm heavy dark side bias. Yeah. Ray, I just love her. I, like I said, her being her trying so hard to be good and trying to find her place in the world, but she keeps getting pulled to the dark, and I'm ready to see that explore more in ROTS. The Rise I, of Skywalker. I don't know if I did the RTOS. I did that wrong. The Rise of. The Rise of. No, what? T R O S. The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, I got it right. Did you I? said you said R O T S. That's yeah. Revenge of the Sith. Yes, yeah, I, I knew I fucked it up, but um, yeah, and then Kylo Ren, same thing, just the opposite. Oh, opposite. His relationship with his dad fascinates me. We still don't know why he hates him so much. We still don't really know, like yeah. why does Ben Solo hate Han so much? My theory: he cheated on her with Kira and had Ray. <laughs> my Ray parentage theory, right there throwing it out there. <laughs> Even though she's probably a clone, that's my theory. Um, K Kenobi is because he's sassy, he's sexy, and I grew up watching Kenobi. So, he was like the first character I gravitated to. And of course, Can, well, his, his, his relationship with Anakin's fascinating. And his, he, his, his relationship with, um, what's her name? His girlfriend. The Duchess Satine. The Duchess Satine. He, she's a Jedi, she's a pacifist like leader, and he just doesn't seem like the type who would be in a relationship, and just that relationship just fascinates me. And then Ahsoka. Best character in Star Wars. Snips. Snips, our baby girl. Had the biggest turnaround of being the most hated character to one of the most beloved. Yes. I will consume anything Ahsoka's in. I will buy all the Ahsoka merch. I will... Yeah. Ahsoka will live forever in my heart, you know. You bought like four paintings over <laughs> yeah, celebration. celebration yeah. That's not enough. Uh, yeah. I mean, I bought just about as many, too. Yeah. Ahsoka's, uh, I think, seventh on my list. Yeah, we'll talk about that one day on a podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about that one day on a podcast. I just mean, I also quite like Ahsoka. Yeah. But, like, I feel like Obi-Wan is, he's the 
quintessential Jedi. Yeah. He's kind of he's basically the best that the Jedi have to offer. He's not the most wise. But what about the kid that turns into Snoke? That's true. The kid that Anakin kills. Yeah, he's one of the best Master Jedi. Skywalker. Or the calamari that Grievous kills. Oh, that guy was great. Yeah, I know. Okay, so Obi Wan's the third best Jedi. <laughs> the, no, he's the best alive Jedi. That's true. That survives longer than Order sixty six. Yeah. <laughs> he, but like, you know, he he kind of embodies perfectly what I've always imagined the ideal Jedi would be, because he still feels like. You know, he still wants to be with the Duchess Satine. Mm -hmm. He still wants to get revenge for Qui Gon to Maul. He still wants Anakin to be his brother. He's yeah. He like he he has all these wants. So you know, he's still human, mm -hmm. but he knows that it's his duty to be above it and to be a Jedi. He can't have these things because of his position. And I love that whole idea. He's one of the only characters that never seems to you know, break or, like, lose his morals. I mean, he gets kind of broken. His comedy gets broken between three and four, but that's just because he had to basically kill his brother. Yeah. That that put a damper See, on things. He kind of reminds me of the... He is him. He is also part of the quintessential to one of my favorite quotes of all time from any fiction. Love is the death of duty, and duty is the death of love. Like, his duty has cost him Everything. Everything. His brother, the person he loved. And that's why he's the most interesting Jedi and one of the best Jedi, because he doesn't want to conform to these rules and stuff, but he does because he knows he needs to. But he because he, he, he thinks there'll be I think he knows there will be a time where he'll find a time for when it's better for them. He'll he thinks he can lead them to a better to place. He'll suffer. He'll so suffer everyone so. else can flourish. Yeah. That's just what the Jedi should have always have been. Not like Mace Windu. I don't like Mace Windu. <laughs> Mace Windu's cool. No, Mace Windu's awesome. I love him, but I also hate him because he's a very flawed Jedi. He is the example of everything wrong with the Jedi. But I that's don't a think he's that bad. No, I don't think he's everything wrong. I think Yoda's everything wrong with the Jedi. Combined, they're everything wrong with the Jedi. Because yeah. Yoda, at least... You know, they're, I think they're opposites. Like they're yeah together because he, Mace, Mace Windu wants to destroy everything and fight, and then Yoda's like pass, more pacifistic and well, no, it's more like um Mace is super dogmatic. He's super strict. If you veer off the code at all, then he holds a grudge against you. He despised Anakin, but he's also the one that veers off the code. He's the one who veers off the code to the sense of that he uses Vapod, but. He's also the one who most strictly holds, holds the code. And that's the only reason why Vapod doesn't corrupt him. Because everybody else who's used Vapod has fallen to the dark side. Mm -hmm. But he is so dogmatic and strict in his teachings of the light that he doesn't fall. And that's why I love him and he's badass. But I also can't Purple stand him. Because he is like the symbol of like, oh, we can't bend. We can't make any, you know... Even if it, you know, saves more lives, we cannot compromise. This is the code. We have to follow it. Mm -hmm. And I always hate that, but it also, you know, because he's such a badass. I mean, what are you going to do? Fight against him? <laughs> we'll fucking destroy you. No, we got to respect that he has his morals no, yeah, and I his respect code and then it. he sticks to it. I respect it, but I hate it. I like him, but more than Yoda. I don't like Yoda that much. Uh, Yoda's like... Yoda's, Yoda's, Yoda's fine. Yoda's fifth. Yoda's for me. fine. Fifth in characters? He's like either fifth or sixth. No, oh, he's not even top five Jedi for me. He's he is num <laughs> he, he's number two for me for Jedi. Mm. I love Yoda. He's all right. I love Yoda's little like. He's overrated. I love, but I love Yoda's like his soul crushing experience in Episode Three. How like he like he almost has that realization of like. I like him in Episode Five more than anything. Prequel Yoda, I don't care for. See, I like Episode Five Yoda the best, but I I appreciate him so much more because of Prequel Yoda. Mm. Episode Three, you kind of see where he sort of, kind of drops the whole, you know, holier than thou. Yeah, holier than thou. You know, the Jedi mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. of like mentality. He kind of like drops it because he can feel basically his whole family because the whole Jedi Order sees him as their 
grandpa, basically. Mm-hmm. He has to feel them all dying, and it basically just fucking breaks him. Yeah. And then he fails against Palpatine and loses, and just is so upset at himself and so, like, just broken down that he just goes into exile. And I like that. Yeah, like, him in episode 8, too. Yeah, I like and Goofy eight. when he doesn't have his hubris anymore, when he realizes... When he, well, yeah, that, you're right, actually. That does make it better, because he learns from his fucking... Yeah. His massive fuck-up in the prequels. And because that's the whole point of the prequel Jedi. They're bad. Yeah. They're terrible. They're not bad people. They're, no, they're good people, they're but they're... They're inept. Yeah, they're incredibly inept. I almost said the R word. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I've almost had, like, eight slip-ups so far. Yeah. But, um, yeah... Characters, fun characters. characters. But there's so many great. That's the thing about Star Wars. That's what keeps me coming back. All the characters. But to get back to favorite characters, <laughs> gotta talk. You know, like I said, my number one and number two, Palpatine and Vader. Mm-hmm. They're just to me, you know, because of how I grew up. To me, the quintessential villain of all time. When I think of the word villain, for me personally, I will always Voldemort. think of Sheev Palpatine. Oh, looks similar. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen you haven't seen the rest of the Harry Potters. No, I've seen them, but you don't. You I don't know what I mean? Anything. You don't remember them. So I don't want to say too much about Voldemort. But Palpatine is more competent. No, well, I bet. But you don't like, like you don't like Baby V though. Baby, Baby Voldemort v is hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that on my record. Yeah. But um, Palpatine is like he's he's just the he's just such a. Because he's very kind of generic in terms of... He's just a bad guy, you know. We don't have too much to him. But the way he's acted and the way he's written, I think, more than makes up for that. Because he is just... You know, because there always has to be that one ultimate evil who doesn't have too much of, like, an in-depth story or... You know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's more of, like, his actions are more of what I've always loved. Seeing him just destroy these master Jedi seeing him throw Maul and Savage around like ragdolls and just completely destroy them without even breaking a sweat really mm-hmm. he's so powerful and so evil he has so many plots going on he has everything planned ahead and then when he finally gets his empire you kind of see where he sort of loosens up and how he ultimately falls to Vader because in his mind he's basically already won mm-hmm I mean, I know he always viewed the Empire as a stepping stone to go beyond and, you know, find the source of the Force, and he had all these lofty goals, but in terms of the whole political struggle, he had already won. Yeah. See, the thing about Palpatine for me is I've never been, like, a big fan of him, but as time goes on and the more he's in, like, Rebels, and the more, I'm excited to see him in Episode Nine. but the more I view his arc, the more I respect it and how he was, especially in the prequels, even because coming from nothing, not nothing, but like manipulating everybody so badly, like you got fucked. Like, how did you let this man convince you to fucking? He's just so good at that. He how can how can you let this man control both sides of the war with yeah. no one catching on? Like, once you once you saw Jar Jar on the council, you should know something's up. Why is this man <laughs> on the council? Who would allow that except someone who's playing both sides? You know. You know? <laughs> well, also, because Jar Jar was there just to be like, oh, I proposed the vote for the Chancellor to get emergency supreme power. Hello, Dello Felagates. Hello, Dello Felagates. Yeah, he's just such a manipulative fuck, and I love it. I don't want to rewatch the prequels. And, I haven't watched them in a while. And the other thing is, is the way he's acted in the prequels is brilliant, too, because he is having the time of his fucking life that whole time. He's mm-hmm. just smiling and laughing. He loves it so much. You know. Yeah. He, I, I could talk about Palpatine for days. Yeah, so let's not. Yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to our, our favorite movie. Now, this is a loaded question. This is a very loaded because question. Because if you ask me today what my favorite movie is, it'll probably be different next week and the week after that or next year. Because there's like, I think the way I see it is there's five movies. Essentially. I think they're the same five for me. No. Probably. No. 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 <laughs> I have one in there that you don't. The five movies that any day could be number one for me are Empire Strikes Back. 
Of course. Return of the Jedi. The Force Awakens. Rogue One. And The Last Jedi. Those are my five. See, I, I find it interesting when you say uh, Return of the Jedi. I love Return I've of the Jedi. I've always said, I've always thought that Return of the Jedi is the most underrated Star Wars movie. Oh no, Return of the Jedi is easily it, top. Like, it's it, it, it changes in the bottom. Like, top two, Rogue One, Empire, and Force Awakens, kind of. And the bottom three, Force Awakens, Jedi, they all flip. Like, yeah. But, like, I mean, like, a lot of, like, Original trilogy purists don't like Episode Six. No, I that's one of my favorites. Yeah, but I agree. I love Episode Six. It's not in my five contested ones, but yeah. I guess I more have four contested ones any any one day. But if I had to pick right now what my favorite Star Wars movie is I, in this moment, I'll go with Rogue One just because the ending was so the war was brilliant. Saw Gerrera was one of my favorite characters in that movie. Just how they had the gall to kill everybody at the end. And just... The balls. Yeah. It's just... I just love Scarif. I love Jetta, Krennic. Palp- not Palpatine. Krennic. Moff Tarkin. I just love everything about it. Jyn Erso is underrated. I think she's pretty cool. Cassandra, like we were talking about earlier. Their whole crew is great. I hope Chase. Chase. Sorry, if you don't understand Chase... Chirrut and Baze. Chirrut and Baze, if we ever say Chase, it's a common term from Star Wars Galaxy Heroes when they're together. Yeah. Chase meta. Chase meta was one of the first metas with the wig, with wigs. With wig, yeah, Chase and wigs. Yeah. Oh, man. Who was, the, who was the fifth member on that team? Chase, wigs, and... It usually and, didn't matter. Yeah, it usually didn't matter. It was just whatever you had. <laughs> I think it was a lot of um, Princess Leia, though. Leia or, like, Lando sometimes? No. Sometimes Le- Yeah, actually, yeah, Lando. Or Stormtrooper Han. Stormtrooper Han, actually, probably... Well, no, that was probably before his rework. Old Ben? No, that was before his rework. Okay, let's stop talking about Galaxy here. Yeah, let's stop talking about Galaxy. But yeah, Rogue <laughs> One is just... Amazing. Amazing. Rogue One, I think, is the perfect example of a movie that, like, just gets better as it goes along. Yeah, and explaining... I like how they explain the fault in the Death Star. It's a great way to explain it. Like, it was there intentionally. Because it's such a... Like in episode four, it's such a dumb flaw, really. Yeah. He's also he's actually someone that I think they need to explore more. They're probably doing the Rogue One Catalyst, but Galen Erso. I want to know more about him and what he was doing with Krennic all that whole time while they were while he was building the flaw and how he got away with it and stuff. I also have to mention Meme Lord Krennic. I love Director Krennic because if I remember, if, I don't think there's a single line that he has in that whole movie that hasn't been memed. I want to know. Because he is so <laughs> over the top. That's why I'm excited about um the next Thrawn book, the third book. He has Isn't a it about beef with... Krennic, right? Krennic or something. And, they're, no, um, it's either he has a beef with Krennic or Krennic is obsessed with him. I don't remember what it is. But also in Rebels, they kind of had a... They, there was a start of a little bit of beef because Thrawn wanted the funding for his TIE Defender, but the funding instead went to Project Stardust yeah. for the Death Star. I don't remember what it is, but so Krennic I either being, has a beef or is obsessed with him. I could see it being both. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> he has a beef beef with him because he's obsessed with him. <laughs> but what about your what about the other movies that you love? Before we get to mine. Force Awakens. No yeah, I mean like but what like what about them makes them your favorites? Force Awakens, I like Ray. <laughs> I like how Kylo stops the bolt. <laughs> I'm a simple man. You. No. <laughs> Force freeze is one of the dopest powers. See, I think people when when people say that Force Awakens is just a rehash of New Hope, I don't think they're completely wrong, but I still think it has a lot of new ideas in it too. I think it's a very, you know, obviously you it's a very similar premise, mm-hmm. like overarching plot is very similar, but it's done with completely different characters and handled very differently. Yeah, I don't agree with that argument completely. I, I agree it's similar, but like, I feel like a lot of different things happen. I think the sheer difference in characters is enough. Yeah. Because also, you gotta imagine, they were going with the safest bet. This is after, you know, everybody was ripping on the prequels for ten years. They wanted to, you know, I, I understand. They wanted to go safe. Be like, hey, we're, Star Wars is back. Like, I also like how they misdirected you when you thought Finn was the Jedi. Like yes. when going into that movie, I had no idea Ray was the main character. No idea. Yep. Watching the trailers, 
you saw Finn with the lightsaber, like, and the, you could tell because they didn't make any choice for Ray either. Like, you had no idea. I just, and then I thought Han's death was perfect. Even on the poster, Finn's the one holding the lightsaber. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And then I like how I like Han's death. I don't know. I think people have problems with that, but. Really? I don't know. People are. I have problems with People have problems with everything. But um, I like that. I like Ben Solo. I like them fighting on a winter planet. On the Starkiller base with lightsabers. So, I need I need to get when we, whenever we talk about Kylo Ren on Starkiller base, I need to get this argument out there right away because it's one of the arguments that I can't stand the most, and this is something that you and I both agree on. I'm pretty sure. I was tapping my stomach like Kylo Ren does when he bleeds on, <laughs> on Starkiller base. That when people say, "Oh, Kylo's so weak because he lost to Rey," there they do oh, not yeah. understand. I want to see those people take a shot to the ribs, be in a fucked up emotional state from killing your dad, and then try to get into a sword fight with someone. Yeah. See how well you do with a broken rib cage. <laughs> I get it. You know they're like, oh, he's a, he he he's a dark side lord. He should be able to go through it, and he's trying to go through it. But mm-hmm. and also at the end, doesn't Snoke say, "Come back to finish your training"? Yeah, he's he not fully trained. Fully trained, and then. Yeah, and I, Ray was Ray grew up on a planet where she had to fight people constantly. Mm-hmm. So she has that combat sense. He, Finn goes up against Kylo. Kylo knocks him out in like a minute. Probably should have killed him or paralyzed him. That back, <laughs> you know, that would have been a disservice to Finn's character. Well, yeah, but like, you fucked up his back, and then like th- a week later, he's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Not even. It's like twenty four hours. That's more like a week. I thought it was like. Boring. I don't think it's twenty four hours. It's more like a few days. Okay. Well, still, it's it's very quick recovery. But yeah. yeah, sorry. I have to get that argument out whenever Star Killer Base. The fight is mentioned there. Yeah, it's like Force Awakens. It made me fall in love with Star Wars again. Yeah. Um, and Daisy Ridley, Daisy Ridley is my queen. So. <laughs> um, and then Empire. I don't need to talk about Empire. No, everyone loves Empire. Dagobah. Luke, I'm your father. Just everything about it is perfect. The, was it the incest kiss in that one, or was that four? There's an incest kiss in both of them. Exactly. You see my point? Four, it's um, they're about to swing over the, the, the bridge, and Leia kisses him and says, that's for luck. And then in five, uh, her and Han are arguing, and she's like, oh yeah, and goes up and grabs Luke's face and just makes out with him. <laughs> Furiously. Yeah, I don't need to explain five. And then, of course, the one I probably need to explain the most. <laughs> <laughs> the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. I like The Last Jedi. I've probably watched that movie the most purely because... Do you hear that? What? You can almost hear people disliking because of you saying you like The Last Jedi. Because the the hate fueled me in a way. It really well, I does. enjoyed it, but like I watched it way more than I should have just because like... When people hate something for like weird reasons, it just makes me like it more. Like... Yeah. When people say there was not a lightsaber fight in episode 8 I'm like that just makes the Praetorian Guard fight my favorite fight in Star Wars you know like <laughs> that scene alone is everything because you the last thing I expected was them to fight together the last thing and I- it was beautifully choreographed Praetorian Guards are like cooler than most guards or stormtroopers in Star Wars you know yeah to see royal guard like basically super royal guards actually do something is fucking awesome yeah and then I love Crate as a planet. I love... I don't necessarily... I, I love the Star Destroyer going through the... I don't know, I love the... The Rattus. Rattus going through it. I thought it was beautiful. The sound design was brilliant. I do not like the Leia thing. The Leia thing is not I good. don't hate that it happened, but it didn't look great. No, the, the, the biggest problem was the way it was presented. Because we all know that Yoda wanted to train Leia instead of Luke. We know Leia has that kind of power. Yoda implied... It's implied that she's stronger yeah. than Luke. So not that not the fact that it happened, but it was too... The way it was presented was too... What's the word? Like, too, like, a uh, Fake? Yeah. I don't hate Canto Bite, but I don't find it particularly enthralling. We both agree that it's the weakest part of the film. Yeah. But I like the, the fact that they fail. I like the idea that yes. failure is a great teacher, which a lot of people had problems with. There was no point, but it was all character development. Yeah. Poe's part, Finn, Rose, it was all 
I also, people are going to hate this. I love the Rose's line that if you, like, about protecting what you love instead of destroying what you hate. Yeah, people are really going to hate you saying that. I like that concept. I don't think she should have crashed into Finn's thing. But I also no. think Finn shouldn't have done that either. Yeah, I just think they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I don't, but, like, I like the idea, that concept. Because what's the point of fight, fighting to destroy if you lose what you love along the way? You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that concept. It's just handled a little strangely. Yeah. The whole Rose part. But all the Ray and Kyle stuff, the Force Skype, as people call it, I love it. Luke, I think it made... <laughs> I like Luke. Made him a better character, in my opinion. Oh, His God. journey. It's a... D- damn, we gotta be authentic. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. We gotta no, be authentic. No, no, no. They I agree. We don't, we worry about, don't worry about what they say. We gotta be authentic. No one's gonna listen to this, probably, so don't worry about what they say. Um... I agree, we gotta be authentic, you know, but I can't help but get that feeling when it's like, oh no. But, um, yeah. There's everything. The little, little caretakers. Cute little... Porgs. That's it. Porgs. Because the other thing is, I also agree with your Luke statement. <laughs> <laughs> we share many of the same opinions on Last Jedi. Yeah. I hate the argument I like of... that they killed Snoke. I mean, especially because that opens up Palpatine for nine. Yes, at first I at first I was kind of iffy on it, but if it opens the way for Palpatine, and it makes so much more sense. That's what I mean. A lot of people judged Episode Eight right away. You got to see the whole saga mm-hmm. before you can make a true judgment. I think I think people look back better on. I don't think people will ever come around on it completely. But I think it'll be not as bad. Yeah, it'll be one of those things where it ages better. Yeah. Um, but like. I hate that a lot of people make the argument of, oh, the light speed ram scene is light speed ram scene is dumb because why don't they just do that every time? Because that's impractical and a waste of resources. Impractical, waste of resources, and why would the rebel suicide bomb? That's not who they are. And but also, there is a a, a physic explanation for it because a lot of people also say, well, why don't you just when your ship's getting damaged and you're gonna die anyway, why don't you just light speed ram into something? But the way it's explained is. That the Radis only did that much damage because its shield is strong enough to keep it together. Anything else would pretty much vaporize on impact and would be about as much damage as like a normal missile. Oh yeah, probably wouldn't. Have, yeah, it's only because the Radis was goddamn gigantic, and the fact that its shield was strong enough to keep it intact just long enough for it to pierce through, mm-hmm. just long enough because they had a shield good enough to survive a barrage from the giant. Supremacy Star Destroyer. Mm-hmm. Obviously, their shield's amazing. Yeah. I just have to get that argument up there, too. I have a lot of arguments. Yeah, we, we, we don't need to see. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, let's move on to yours and then wrap up. Yeah. So, mine are m- much of the same. Uh, so, don't be too much to explain. Empire. Empire, obviously. Any day of the week, that can be my favorite. Rogue One. Mm hmm. And, well, really, I actually re- mainly have three movies that can be that. So, Empire, Rogue One, and Revenge of the Sith. Okay, let's talk about Revenge of the Sith for a little bit. I adore Revenge of the Sith. I think it is the most fun a Star Wars movie has ever been, because it is so action-packed. It is... It's also... But it's like... uh, It's so action-packed, and it's the culmination of, like, finally making Anakin not a little bitch, like he is (laughs) through episode one and two. Especially too, where he's really bad, but like it's like, you know, you're seeing fine, you're finally starting to see the hints of Vader in him as he's going through the movie, seeing the fall of the Jedi, Palpatine just having the time of his fucking life. It's so full of action and so full of just, you know, like pure Ewan McGregor goodness. Pure, yeah, pure Ewan McGregor goodness. The Grievous Obi Wan fight, Obi Wan Anakin, Yoda. Obi Wan Anakin fights amazing. Obi Wan Anakin is one of the best fights. That's one of my one of my favorite lines too. Is you are my brother, Annie. I, I love, love that you. line. I love that part. You were I supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them. Yeah, but let's like, watch it right now. That whole everything that happened in that movie, it's such a good time. So much action, and I just like I said earlier, I love when the villain wins, and they win hard that movie. Yeah. But you knew they were gonna win. But but also. Yes, you know they're going to win, but it's also just so awesome to see because it makes mm-hmm. the fall of the Empire so much more rewarding. Yeah, I can agree with that. I I like Empire. I mean, Revenge of the Sith. Just not as vehemently as me. Not as much as... I like all... The only Star Wars movie I don't like... 
like I don't like is the, the Clone, Clone Wars, Wars movie, movie animated movie. But like all the movies, there's parts of it that I enjoy. Same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, row one solo. There are parts of it that are enjoyable for all of them. Some less than others. Yeah. And some have bigger problems than others, but they are all very enjoyable films. What's your least favorite Star Wars movie? Episode two. Other than Clone Wars movie. Heresy. Episode two. It's my it's the second worst, but I think Phantom Menace is the worst. I think Phantom Menace has more good about it. No, the only good part about Phantom Menace is Obi Wan and Qui Gon, and then the fight at the end with Maul. Fight at the end with Maul, Obi Wan, Qui Gon, Pod Racing's dope. Episode two has the Coliseum fight, which is cool. It has the Django Obi Wan fight. It has the cool Zam muscle thing at the beginning. But it also has Anakin trying to rape Padme throughout most of the film. It's clearly consensual. Dan, do you think if you were showing affection to someone that you would be any better than Anakin? I wouldn't be like... See, but... (laughs) He's just so creepy! It's so creepy! It makes me physically uncomfortable. That's why I hate episode two more than one. Because it just makes... I don't hate it. I think it's bad acting, not creepy. (laughs) That's part of it, though. It's just so creepy. I don't like it. Yeah, you don't like creepy things. The fact that they had a... The fact that... You don't like them rolling around in the grass? <laughs> but, like, the fact that in episode one it almost feels more like a mother and son relationship. No, them dating... Ju- yeah, that's why episode one's the worst, too. He's, like, ten. She's, like, 45. That's not really. Not a- <laughs> but she's... She is 16? And he's, like, three. Eight? Eight. Maybe that's not as bad. But it just it's the same age gap between. Seems, but it's weird because he's a kid when they first meet. Yeah. That makes it weird to me. I don't like Their it. Their relationship's just weird. I like Padme, though. Mad respect for Padme. Padme gets progressively worse as the movies go along, though. Episode three, she's not good. Yeah. She's just, she's just a baby mama the whole movie, and she's just all crying. Baby and, mama drama? Like, in episode one and two, she actually, like, fucks shit up. Well, you know the reason that episode three she's like that. She had a beef with George Lucas. I know. Yeah. She had problems with the... Even though the rumor is George Lucas didn't direct episode three. But <laughs> yeah. The rumor is Spielberg did, but... They, you know, uncredited. Regardless of that, I still feel like it hurts her character overall. Hmm. She just kind of... But she died of sadness. Yeah, she dies of sadness. <laughs> Yeah, that's just, that's just suicide though. People kill themselves; they die of sadness. It's not. But she, no, I I get it, but it's just it's a weird departure from how she is in the previous films. Yeah, I get you know it's outside beef, but you know, is what it is. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our talking about Star Wars. Got to learn something about us, why we love Star Wars. I want to hear why you love Star Wars. Leave in the comments. Hit us up on Twitter at holocron underscore cast. Tell us what you think. We're gonna have um, we're on Twitch at powerful thigh guys and Instagram powerful thigh guys. Follow us. We're gonna hopefully start putting up a lot of this stuff soon, and uh, maybe some other stuff too. Yeah, maybe some other stuff in the future. But if you want to look for our thoughts on reviews of the upcoming shows, the games. And what's coming in the Star Wars universe and just our theories and our thoughts of the franchise in general. Give us a follow, subscribe. Um, Just let us know anything you want to see. Yeah, what you want us to talk about. Uh, Just let us... um, Let us know what what went right in this episode, what you liked about it. But also let us know what went wrong. Yes, of course. All feedback will be constructive to us. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Peace.